Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much for making the effort to come along today. Uh, today, we're going to talk about fundamentals of care. Uh, we're joined by Katie and Keris from the Fundamentals of Care team based at Hampshire Hospitals. So thank you very much for attending, Katie and Keris. I'm just going to run through now a little bit about ourselves. Uh, so my name is George from Vivid Care. We were formerly Yorkshire Care Equipment and the sales director here. And we've been in business 50 years. Uh, to celebrate that anniversary, we decided to change a name. <laughs> and um, our mission has always been all the way throughout to enhance our lives by advancing care. So we deal with a lot of uh, professionals like yourselves um, in terms of hospitals, care facilities, um, attending home assessments, and we specialize in uh, seating ranges, um, but also have quite a few falls products and rehabilitation products, along with the mobility ones here at the showroom in Harrogate. So just a handful of, of products, just briefly. So first of all, on the left there, the Lento Bariatric Rise and Recline Chair. Uh, we launched that uh, just under two years ago at the National Back Exchange. That's a fully adjustable uh, rise and recline chair for the plus size users. Uh, one of our most recent ones moving along is the, um, I should say Lento Mobile, so the second one in, and that's a chair which is compatible with the Arjo Steady. So a rise and recline chair compatible with Arjo Steady, which as many of you know, is has often been a difficulty. Uh, third one along there is the Razor 2 emergency lifting chair. Many of you may be familiar with that. Uh, the ambulance services and full services use this product. Um, very reliable and very quick and speedy to, to lift somebody from the floor. And then again, another recent addition to our range is the Vela range uh, made over in Scandinavia, the activity chairs. Um, so functional work chairs for either and the less able or also for the hospital staff um, carrying out procedures to ensure good positioning and, and comfort. So at this stage, I'm gonna um, hand over to Katie and Keris. Thank you again for, for joining us. We'll have question and answers at the, at the end of their presentation. Um, so please send these through on the, on the chat and we will we'll answer those at the end. So I'll hand over to you. Katie and Keris, thank you. Hi everyone, sorry, we've got a sticky key on our laptop. <laughs> um, bear with us, it works better for you. Yeah. Uh, we'll just share our screen. Um, I'll just start introducing me while we're doing that. So. I'm Katie. I'm the lead nurse for fundamentals of care in the older adult at Hampshire Hospitals. And hi everyone, I'm Keris. I'm the lead tissue viability nurse for Hampshire Hospitals and deputy um, for the FOC team. Uh, so firstly, just thank you to whoever's made time. We know how busy everyone is. Um, we've certainly been going through some trying times this morning, so we really do appreciate it. And we just wanted to do a really short presentation on our experiences over the last couple of years um, and how admitting that things aren't OK, OK was the first step for us to enable change and tackle some of the challenges that we were facing. Sorry, sticky keys again. <laughs> Guys, are oh, oh, there we go. Oh, it's oh. Oh. <laughs> There's a delay, we're sorry. So you should be able to go back. It's just slow and catching up. What we'll do is, because we've got a bit of a speech, we'll kind of, we'll just go through it and as you get to it, um, we might catch up. So the Fundamentals Care team um, started in 2022. We kind of based on a vision that Keris and myself shared. Both working in roles which promoted patient safety, we recognise that the same issues relating to the delivery of care were usually the same reasons as to why patients were developing pressure ulcers and falling over. Um, this combined with the fact that patients 
were becoming more sicker than, than ever really. The confused were more confused and those living with frailty were now frail, often meant that staff were unintentionally missing basic aspects of patient care. We felt that we had finally sort of run out of time and the um, to-do list kept growing. But together we believe that our vision, which aimed to develop staff um, through clinical support and acceptance that things aren't okay could make a difference. We knew that to achieve this vision, we would need to start having some very difficult conversations with various teams to really highlight some of the concerns that we had. Hopefully throughout this, you might recognize some of our challenges. So do feel free to share your experiences, like we've just said. Um, but to start, we just wanted to introduce us and what we do. Um, so in relation to where we sit in organizational structure, we report um, directly to the CNO team. And the clinical services that we offer are accessible to all patients admitted to the trust. We're heavily focused on staff development, not just within our own team, but for our wider colleagues. And we're driven by, by the idea that together we can raise standards, promote safety, prevent harm, and help to create a workforce that is proud to be part of an MDT in an environment where we all feel safe and supported. To begin with, our team started as myself and Katie, and we were tasked with selling a vision which at the start felt like nobody was interested in. Each day we received pushbacks or were met by obstructive colleagues, but we didn't give up. And shortly after we became a team, Becky, our senior support, was quick to buy in and the rest, as they say, is history. In the space of six months, we have had investment from our CNO, budget to recruit, recruit into newly created posts, and what started as two nurses passionate about holistic care is now a team of 12. Nurses, practitioners, and an admin manager all determined to create a change. In our team, whilst managerial tasks are allocated, we have moved away from hierarchy and instead promotes everybody's role as a leader, celebrating our strengths and acknowledging our weakness together. We offer a range of clinical services from tissue viability to podiatry, to nutritional optimization, and each of us brings something special to the team and to the patients we care for. But the most important thing for us is that we are all brave enough to challenge the norm, break down barriers, and strive to create our vision, which we discussed earlier. Should we give it a go? Yeah. We did try it. We tried. No slides. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, so where do you fit in and why are we here? Firstly, we hope that by sharing our experiences, we get more people talking. And hopefully by the end of this webinar, some of you will ask questions, share some ideas, or even disagree with what we've said. We'd also like to think of today as an opportunity to create another safe space where we can be honest in the way that we're feeling. And because of this, we want to talk about deconditioning, not just for our patients, but in healthcare and its staff. Prior to COVID, the um, COVID pandemic, we were often seeing a loss of pride in our colleagues, passion from some, not all was lost, and everything was becoming a tick box exercise. And whilst we knew the population was changing, many were unprepared for what an aging population really meant. There was always another documentation task to complete, another bell to answer, and those little things that we all love doing, like chatting to patients or washing hair, often became tasks put to the bottom of the list. Along with this, we began to see an over-dependency of equipment. More and more staff seem to be forgetting that a pressure relieving mattress is there to complement repositioning mobility. It's not there to replace it. Others could only identify a postural drop thanks to a knobs machine. And we know that watching a patient can tell us a whole lot more. All of these things have become a tick box exercise and the care behind it was slowly being forgotten. We would often hear patients described as the lady with the ulcer or the man with the hip. Patients were frequently being def defined and described as an illness rather than the person that they are or by their name. And the unconscious divide between the MDT was growing. Nurses withdrawing from <clears throat> washing patients because it's the role of the carer and there was lots of documentation to complete. Nursing and care staff declining to get patients out of bed because therapists need to mobilize patients first and only nursing staff complete care plans were becoming regular responses from those around us. And conflicts between day and night teams was erasing anything just about the cultures we were or had been working in. Something had to change because things really weren't okay. 
Obviously, we knew that what we were noticing wasn't a reflection of everybody or every trust. And we also believed that our passion could be the driver for change that many often talked about. And so we realized that those difficult conversations needed to happen quickly and not just with our patient facing staff, but with wider leaders of the trust. Our next challenge was sell our vision on a wider scale, which was going to be the hardest part of our journey. Because we have come to realize that people have forgotten their place and role in influencing and creating delivery of care to be proud of, and we needed to understand why if they were to feel empowered once more. And so with some safe space, walkabouts, we came to realize that people have forgotten that proactive challenge is healthy and that it's okay to say, this isn't okay. Something that we are doing isn't working and it needs to change. Many had also stopped asking for help and stopped celebrating the good care they delivered. And so for the last six months, we have strived to deliver the message, happy staff, happy patients. And we think that great things have already started to happen. Stripping things back to basics has been a great way to remind everybody that we have supported about why we do what we do and why we choose to work in healthcare. We have made a point to remove any eyes from clinical teams that we have worked with, promoting teamwork equals dream work. Regardless of our specialty or the uniform that we wear, our team is visible on the wards. We are stopping the, the too posh to wash culture and we all work together to get patients out of bed educating and influencing one step at a time, showing our colleagues who remain deconditioned that everything that we do is for our patients, breaking divides as we go. With FOC teaching days, a little healthy competition and questioning why we do things the way we do, we have begun to see a change. Staff on the wards that we have supported are smiling again. Culture is changing and our mission to recondition the hospital has really begun. We know that for most, the passion and commitment to patient care is still very much at the heart of what we do, but sometimes pressures and changing patient demographics does make it harder for the passion to shine through. Our challenge now is to prepare our staff for the future and what is to come. We made it through COVID and together we will most definitely give our next challenge a fight. But to really succeed, our vision will need to be spread further. Joined up ways of working will need to increase and innovation will need to continue if we are to sustain this momentum. And that's why our next goal is work to celebrate and empower our unpaid and community care co colleagues, who without we would not be able to do what we do. And so in June this year, the FOC team will be holding our first Carers Day, which will be an opportunity for relationships to grow, experiences to be shared and education to be offered. So please do look out for any further information on social media. We're also really excited to announce that we've been nominated for two awards for the work that we've been doing, which really does go to show that being brave and admitting things aren't okay really can create a change that everyone wants to be part of. Thanks so much for giving us your time and we'd now like to invite you to ask any questions. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you, Katie and Karis. Um, hats off just from a personal point of view, I'm sure everyone will, will echo that as to um, making that hard decision to to stick your neck out if you like and what a what a great change has, has come about. Are you um just a question from myself uh, before they start dropping in. So the Hampshire hospitals, is that have you got like a group of hospitals within the trust? So do you, your team have to cover quite a few different sites or yeah, so we, we've got three three trusts. Um, so there's us at Basingstoke, we've got Winchester, and we've got a site in Andover as well. So we cover everyone. We've got a lot of patients. <laughs> yes, yeah. And great to see the increase of the team there from two to 12 to make that more achievable. And have you been approached by other sort of trusts around your area to kind of model that? that um. We, we have so uh, a neighboring trust not in the um, not in within Hampshire but in a, in a different area they actually saw what we were doing and created a week of fundamentals um, it, it was a four week process but per week they would do a fundamental focus um, we've had lots of people kind of saying what you're doing is is really good and really brave um, we've just been lucky enough to, to be supported by a really good manager who who saw what we could do and be invested in and, and hopefully 
this will start people thinking, can we do this the same or think of their own way of creating this in their, their own trusts or community setting. Because I'm sure, um, like you say, it's key having that supportive manager, but now you must be reaping the, the benefits, certainly from a cost side with, you know, improving. Um, have you have your stats improved in terms of, I'm guessing, falls and sort of pressure care and yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I, I am the Falls Lead Care Assist, the Tissue Viability Lead, and, and I think what we're seeing is a more awareness mm -hmm. and, and people realising, so some, you know, that's the end product, really, the full or the pressure ulcer. We're getting a lot more people realising and understanding the, the psychological impact or what got us to that point, you know, and not everything is about the full or the mm -hmm. pressure ulcer, it's about how we got there mm -hmm. and, and learning. Yeah. Sorry to ask so many, but I'm just quite in, intrigued by it. And then in terms of um, kind of new staff and new starters uh, that come along, how do you kind of, because you've, you've changed the culture, so how do you sort of reinforce the, um, the fundamentals of care, if you like, you know, and is that part of the recruitment process or, or, or do you do like monthly sort of presentations or how do you keep it fresh and in. Yeah, so so we can both talk about this. Um, so we have been lucky enough to be given a full day on corporate induction now for new starters. Um, we've taken over the care certificate. Um, so I'm kind of running the clinical side of the care certificate. I'll let you explain about the... Yeah, and then for staff um, that are new to the trust that will be completing the care certificate, I'll be providing um, a safe space in terms of like well-being. So having catch-ups with them and make sure that um, you know we're addressing any issues that they're coming into sort of contact with. Um, so they feel supported with the hope that they stay and you know they become substantive members of staff so that we can retain staff and they feel well supported while they're um, on this journey of completing their certificate. And, and we, we also sort of take direct referrals either from the, the divisional leads within the hospital um, or our, our manager who's in the chief nursing office. And we do, we call them in need wards. Um, they're not in need, they just need support and a little bit of love actually um, to get that passion back. And, and what we're seeing is those wards that we've been working on heavily, their incidence of, of patient harm caused by the hospital has has really gone down um they're smiling they're talking to us that you know it's it's really lovely mm. to see isn't it it's good and then in terms of staff levels do you think you'll increase um it, 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 is it as simple as sort of a certain amount of wards or people to to one staff or i'm guessing even with 12 you're probably quite stretched over the the size yeah yeah so um we we do run it as a tissue viability service we run a seven day service but i mean foc is, is pretty much covered isn't it across those seven days really yeah. so we've got the three sites to cover um you know it's it's quite a big task with just 12 of us but we would like to think we'll expand yeah um yeah and and get more um more staff joiners definitely it's brilliant. Good. We've had our um, first question come in from Krista. So how do you manage the challenge of reduced staffing, increased demand on these wards while in, whilst improving standards of care and maintaining staff wellbeing? I think there's different ways that we approach it. So I've always worked in elder care and neuro and, and I've never worked a shift where we've had a full complement of staff. You know, it's in me, it's embedded and I think it's becoming the reality now. And what we know, both myself and Keris, who's got a community setting, you can actually work better and more efficient with a good, upskilled, confident mm -hmm. group of staff than what you can with a lot of staff who aren't really sure what they're doing or aren't empowered or don't feel like they can make decisions. So we're really focused on letting everybody know that, you know, every role, role within the team mm -hmm. matters. We, we are all leaders. Um, and on the in terms of... The patients and the staff who are becoming poorlier and the staff are becoming tireder it's about working efficiently you know and we're trying to really influence how we we would be efficient you know mm. we're not saying we're the experts but 
we, we try and let them know that it's all right. And actually remember when you leave at the end of a shift, have you caused any harm to a patient? Because that's what we're striving for. You know, if we've had to let a bell ring for a tiny little bit longer, unfortunately, sometimes that happens, but has that patient come to harm? And most of the time we can, you know, at the door say, we've done, we've done really good stuff. And um, question, thanks for that. Okay, Tim Kerry's question here from Michaela. Um, do you have any links with your local university or education providers to embed your ethos from the beginning? Not, not necessarily the beginning, but we are forging links with universities. We're doing separate research product um, projects within the trust. And as a trust, we are aiming to have a, a tighter force and workforce that are going to universities pre and post reg. Um, and that's one of our, our next challenges. But for now, we need to get it right with who we've got because mm. we're going to lose staff if we don't. So we need to kind of nurture the people coming in, but make sure that the people that we've got are, are really ready to, to can continue that journey. That's really great. Well, um, we, 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 it hasn't come up on the, but are you okay for us to share the, share the slides? Katie and Karis, is that... Yeah, yeah, we can share yeah. the slides. We'll, we'll send our fabulous script as well. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's really good. Um, question here from, from Linda. Do you work with colleagues doing T levels? I teach T levels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yes, we do. Um, but we, at the moment, we don't have students coming in to do T levels. Um, Again, for us, it's about getting, I wouldn't want to put somebody who is very junior, you know, 16, who, who sign up for T-levels in a place where we know we've got work to do. Um, I think, you know, you need, to, you need to make sure that, again, we're safe, we're confident, and we've got a workforce that can spare that time. But it is certainly a vision in the future, I would, I would hope. <laughs> That's great. And a question here from Graham. Have your experiences resulted in a blueprint that would enable the rollout of your initiative to other trusts? I suppose not a formal, not a formal yeah, plan. not a formal no. blueprint. Um, we haven't we haven't done that. I mean, it's something that we could. Yeah, we, we evolve every day. I think, <laughs> I think the thing to say about our team is that whatever we decided we were setting out to do this morning, probably by about 11 o'clock, me and Keris have had a different idea and a new mm. project that we've already we've already completed in our heads. Um, and that's something we've got to learn, isn't it? And we're, we're trying to really, mm. like we said, we work on our strengths and our weaknesses. We're always sort of a year ahead. On to the next thing. On to the next yeah. thing. And <laughs> we need to slow down. And, and I think a blueprint would be great. Yeah. But I think defining that blueprint mm. would be difficult mm. we've certainly got a sop that we're we're working on <laughs> no, that's fantastic that's excellent well if any more um questions come in i'll jump back into those otherwise um i'm sure you know when we send out the the uh opportunity for feedback and the the slides i'm sure um both katie and Carrie will be will be fine for um answering those um just a question uh, well more of a um, statement here from anna many thanks for the presentation totally agree that equipment reliance can be a problem i'm an ot tried to encourage independence and building on strengths well done both for what you've been doing I have to leave now so yeah i think um every would echo on the call it's been very interesting and informative to to um to learn about what you're doing and hopefully that will become part of the norm going forward. <laughs> yes, and, um, obviously, we're always looking for wider FOC colleagues, so please do get in touch because it's the only way we're going to change it nationally. Mm. You know, it's, it's not just us. Everywhere needs a little bit of a reboot, I think. Yeah, that's great. So um, just briefly, just to round up, so just jumping back to ourselves, uh, Vivid Care, we've got lots of free resources online, so really encourage you just to uh, dip in there and um, download the, the yours to, to have. We, we um, include templates for helping writing justifications. Uh, there's lots of training videos on there, um, especially seating ebook, uh, plenty more. So just encourage all to, to um, 
to dip in now. And then just a reminder of, of who we are, is our details on the on the screen now. So just like to again thank everybody very much for coming along. Uh, the work I'm sure the whole workforce is under a lot of pressure. Um, keep up the, the great work and uh, big thanks to Katie and Keris for coming along and sharing what they're doing. Thank you. But, yeah, thank you but, for having us. No problem. Have a great afternoon. Thanks. And you thanks. Bye -bye.